Well, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to, to discuss with you oops, the right of access to information and public knowledge. Thank you. Uh, I was asked only to give a short overview over the topic, not only a personal statement or something like that, uh, just to give you a short hint at what is discussed at the moment or what should be discussed or in future or was discussed with some critics on these topics. Um, oops, sorry, I'm not used to Adobe. Uh, right ac right uh, access to information. Uh, administration, government always uh, states that to administrator to govern a state is very important to know a lot of things about society and transparency of course uh, means to be, uh, that the citizens themselves could should be transparent and to know about people uh, means to know very detailed not only in the uh, digital area but, area, uh, but uh, in the age of socialism, this is a olfactory test from the Ministerium of Staatssicherheit, uh, the former the Eastern German uh, Republic wanted to know how people smell to get them, for example. And on the other hand, transparency not only of the citizens, but transparency of the state, the transparency of the administration, and what people I, what the administration knows about people is, every, uh, is important as well. This is a short glance at the archive of the Stasi with uh, people after, in the 90s uh, looking after their reports. Transparency and of course, uh, I, transparency even I, is one of the most uh, important uh, issues not only in democracy, but uh, in every administration or state. And one of the first examples is the tabula duo decim tabula, legis tabula duo decim tabulor, laurum, I'm sorry, uh, the 12 tables, laws of the, laws of the 12 tables. And it was published. Everyone uh, in the Roman state in Rome has the right to look into the law and to get information, what he is allowed to do, what he's not allowed, what his rights are, here stated in a, a short painting sketch of the Renaissance. Not, of course, in original, originally it was placed near the Regia, not on that like this. Uh, to get to know uh, what is planned in the state was our society knows what to do. Transparency has something to do even uh, to participate within our community, within our society. Uh, this on the floor, on the, on the ground is uh, Mr. Dent, uh, one of the main characters of uh, Adam Hitchhiker of the Galaxy, and uh, through his estate, uh, the government planned a highway, and afterwards, of course, as you all know, uh, through Earth, there was a supergalactical highway planned, and of course, this information was public, and everybody had the right and the possibility, of course, to get access to the information and the plans, but of course, uh, it's not that easy to get information. Uh, this means only to have the right to be informed or to Im inform oneself is not enough in the most times. Uh, this is a short example uh, about transparency of the state and how nowadays, for example, people could be involved in uh, transparency and what, for example, here the members of the UK Parliament uh, had an expenses. And this is an example of crowdsourcing um, in the society. Uh, you see, 
458,832 pages uh, of documents uh, which uh, were public, uh, publish, uh, published uh, by The Guardian. And everyone was invited to scroll or to crawl through that and to read and to examine and to investigate your and their MPs expenses. And my personal uh, topic, my personal topics are, there's an example uh, called Ancient Lives. It's uh, the University of Oxford who published all papyri of Oxyrhynchus who have not been transcripted. This means this is a tool online, ancientlives.com, where everybody who knows Greek can try or do a, a transcription of short, small, little pieces of papyri. Crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, uh, the crowd, we all as a society, we all as a group, maybe enhanced to get a more progress with ideas and whatever else. But after all, critics say, uh, be aware of trusting uh, the wisdom of the crowd. Some people really don't think that there's such thing as wisdom of the crowd, and we have to cope even with that. What to do with it, all that information, all that th thousands of pages. What will the future be? It's, uh, it's like that. It's a future the Watchtower Society likes to draw for us, or a future of that uh, cyborg uh, zero dot one, something like that. Uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, detail in this uh, whole uh, area. At first, uh, one thing is the we have to uh, think about freedom, free access to freedom. What does freedom mean? Is it free freedom of speech, free speech, or could it be a uh, free beer? And in uh, most topics, transparency and uh, right to access of information, of course, uh, they paid for their uh, beer. Um, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, copyright issues, paying, not paying, the German called gratis Kultur, uh, always uh, interferes. How do we think uh, we are gathering information? How do we think, how, what is our opinion on how do we read how we get information. Is it like that? Stift Rhein near Graz, the library or this abbey, or is, this, uh, is that the future or the present? It's uh, a view in the Humboldt University uh, in Berlin. Or, but of course we all know uh, libraries and future or even the present look like that. Uh, this is Google and uh, we have to cope with the digital area. and But in fact, this discussion is influenced by all those ideas and the imagination, how people really like to read, how it is most comfortable to read. Uh, the discussion between e-books and uh, handmade, handcrafted books or machine-crafted books, uh, which you can throw away and you can read them uh, with an e-book reader, it's not so easy. Uh, this all influences the discussion about freedom of access to information. But in fact, uh, the future would be like that. This is the library of the present, the library of the future, an archive. Uh, this is Mannheim on, uh, the, on the ground floor before the castle. Well, uh, a short example of uh, what I'm dealing with as a researcher, as a classicist, or a, a man who's interested in intellectual property. 
Um, this is a document service between libraries. As you all know, if a library doesn't have a book or doesn't have a journal to lend to you, uh, libraries swap books. Libraries send books to each other or you're able to copy some pages from a journal <coughs> at the library. This, is, uh, this service transferred to the digital area, to the online area, Subito, as an online service established in the late 90s to the beginning of the 21st century. And Zubitu faced severe problems in 2008. In 2008, the German government made a reform of their copyright laws. And one of those new paragraphs were 53A about document delivery on demand. This is the service, and it's for free, and it's non-profit, I must say. Subito is a library uh, service for all uh, people, and for the target group on researchers, of course. And this paragraph says, the reproduction and distribution by a post of facts by public libraries of single articles published in newspapers, as, and so on, uh, is legal by individual uh, as long as the order is allowed to use such articles in accordance with paragraph 53. The important here is, I show you, first, the reproduction and distribution in electronic form is permissible exclusively as a graphic file. This means every text you can't search in within and you can't uh, copy and paste uh, as a reference or something like that, but not, that's not all. Uh, this, I'm sorry, is only in German. Uh, we have to use, or the Subito system has to use digital rights management systems, and if you like to read uh, what this digital rights system, and you have to install a plugin before on your computer, uh, what this da requires you to do is first you have to uh, the order and the delivery has to be from the one and only computer one in and one out you don't you have to know where you want to use the file when you order the file uh, the, ne the next one is you can print it only a couple of times and after one month, 30 days for weeks, you can't access the file anymore. If you uh, try to research on literature, uh, what other researchers said or so, be aware, and you use Subito, be aware that after one month, you have no right to access your files. You have to print it out and scan, and then to put an LCR of it. And, of course, this is all for the German, Austrian, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland, and in the worldwide area, and libraries swap, uh, deliver to other areas than uh, the GLRS states as well. It's only possible to print it once. And if you once did not succeed, perhaps a, a second time. But, of course, uh, libraries do not, uh, are not allowed, do not have the uh, allowance to uh, give uh, the users the file. They only give them a print. And uh, this is in 2014. And the second thing is, only access, uh, Subito as, can only send you documents only if access to the articles or small extracts of a work is not possible for members of the public, all of us, on a contractual basis from places and times of their choice. This means another innovation, this is the German uh, Secretary of Justice said that, another innovation is that libraries will be permitted by law to make and send, for example, via email, those copies of copyrighted works, and of course, uh, 
libraries may send copies via email only if the publisher of a particular work does not itself offer the work online in a clearly apparent manner on reasonable terms. This means you have to research uh, or look after your article first, whether it is offered online or not. And after that, you can order it at Subito, uh, double time, doubles the time. And one of those offers I just want to show you, um, Springerlink is an obvious offer, and anybody knows Springerlink providing uh, Springling provides researchers with access to millions of scientific documents and so on and so on. And I was interested in something very near uh, Heidegg, uh, Husserl's phenomenology. And I crawled after Husserl, Horaz, and the Heizmächte für der Phänomenologie. I'm interested in Horaz and a bit in Husserl. Uh, I can lend this article and, or I can buy this article. To buy this article, um, I have to spend 34 euros and 95. Uh, we don't know at the moment how long this article is, but if, um, who? Sorry. No, there's, there got, was something wrong. Uh, but if we, click on the somewhat further, we see this article contains 16 pages. Uh, these 16 pages uh, cost, um, are uh, priced with uh, $35, excluding VAT. You must add the VAT as well. And this is a mistake, but of course uh, you can look at it, at it online for five minutes for free and after, afterwards you can rent five articles for twenty dollars or to become a professional you have to pay just forty dollars a month if you want to get one uh, single article and if you know how long it lasts for re registration and uh, credit card and also on every publisher has its own uh, online platform and this lasts very long and this is uh, the thing people uh, or other lawmakers want to uh, stay alive of course in, on, the, uh, on the internet and for me of course uh, the right of access to information and public knowledge uh, whether this is really freedom of information and that's all I want to say at the moment and I invite all our guests on the podium.